But first, European Union leaders have watched with alarm as Poland has reduced the independence of judges and the press. The EU has threatened to crack down on member states that fail to uphold modern democratic values. However, as special correspondent Malcolm Brabant reports from Warsaw, Poland's special relationship with the Trump administration may encourage Poland's resistance to its European neighbors. Free courts now is the clarion cry. Outside a courthouse in central Warsaw, demonstrators demand the removal of a judge appointed by the populist conservative government to replace one of a more independent spirit. They accuse the country's justice minister of being a judicial puppet master. We are still on the battle for the rule of law in Poland. The rule of law that is dismantled uh, during the last four years permanently. Mikhail Wawrykowicz is a lawyer and founder of a campaign group called the Free Courts Initiative. Independence of judiciary is one of the grounds of the democracy. If the courts are not independent and the judges are not independent, then we have a very serious problem with the democracy. We are old enough to remember what was under the Soviet regime. And right now, and it is incomprehensible to me that this is repeated now, even worse. The rest of the world should be worried of a Polish democracy because it's the model of Turkey and Hungary where judges are not independent, which really means dictatorship. Under Soviets, we normal people, we knew that the papers are lying, that TV is lying. The liberal newspaper, Gazeta Wyborcza, sprang from the venerated Solidarity labor movement of the 1980s, pivotal in the collapse of communism in Poland and across the former Soviet bloc. But the paper is feeling the squeeze. Government entities have pulled advertising. Its reporters have been denied access. It's pretty similar to America. The media are being demonized by uh, the government. They're calling us fake news every, every time we're being critical towards the government. Vadim Makarenko is a senior editor at Gazeta Wyborcza. We have a state-owned television, which is bringing propaganda to Polish households. My newspaper appeals to the European Union more or less regularly, asking it to preserve uh, media freedom in Poland as well as uh, judiciary independence. Based on the distorting, the distorted image uh, of, of Poland, uh, I consider the science as a fake news of, the, of, of this uh, century. Zidzilav Krasnodewski is a member of the European Parliament and an influential member of Poland's Law and Justice Party. It's rubbish to say that in Poland we have a, any slight to aut autocracy or any danger, profound danger to democracy. Of course our democracy, democracy is not pe perfect, but I, I think British is not perfect and German is not perfect. Despite the concerns, Poland of today is nothing like it was behind the Iron Curtain. There are no troops on the streets and the police did not disrupt the protest over the courts. Nevertheless, alarm bells are ringing. I believe that what government uh, is doing can be poten potentially dangerous. Pavel Marchewski is an analyst with the Battery Foundation, established by American philanthropist George Soros to promote open democratic societies in Poland and across Central Europe. I do not believe that they are offering uh, enough space in the public discourse to dissenting voices. Uh, I think that they are trying to build a monolithic political culture in Poland, uh, a culture that is based basically on, on the Catholic faith and a certain vision of Polish history, very heroic vision of Polish history, simplistic vision of Polish history. Such as the music of Frédéric Chopin, Poland's greatest composer, and this key monument, the Warsaw Rising Memorial, honouring 63 days in 1944 when patriots fought in vain against the Nazis. Behind is a modern battleground, the Supreme Court. Last year, the Polish government forced 40% of the court's judges to retire early in a move the European Commission condemned as illegal. 
a change of leadership at the top of the European Union in Brussels is now underway. And that could make it a lot harder for countries like Poland to resist pan-European laws and values. The new European Commission is determined to stop what's been called democratic backsliding. So in the future, member states will be subject to an annual review to make sure they're abiding by the rules. In the 15 years since Brussels admitted nations from the former Soviet bloc, business in Poland has boomed, boosted by $14 billion worth of European funds for state-of-the-art infrastructure. It's now the sixth largest economy in the EU. The implicit warning from Brussels is that unless Poland behaves, the money will dry up. But such sanctions have been threatened before and, according to some EU officials, have had no impact. I think that Poland is going to resist the pressure of the European mainstream. Foreign affairs analyst Adam Bolser believes the governing Law and Justice Party will easily win this autumn's forthcoming general election and will be emboldened as a result. They are going to have more than 50% uh, uh, of uh, seats in the parliament and, uh, of course, they count a lot on the support of the United States, which definitely, in case of this administration, is very supportive of this kind of governments in the European Union. President Trump looks favourably on Poland, not least because it meets his requirement that NATO members spend at least 2% of GDP on national defence. The United States and Poland continue to enhance our security cooperation. Poland will still provide basing and infrastructure to support military presence of about 1,000 American troops. The Polish government will build these projects at no cost to the United States. The Polish government will pay for this. We thank President Duda and the people of Poland for their partnership in advancing our common security. Poland is planning to buy 32 American F-35 Lightning stealth fighters. Total cost, $2.5 billion. President Andrzej Duda was given a personal flyover at the White House last month. And in what some critics label an act of outright sycophancy, Duda intends to call the new American base on Polish soil Fort Trump. One of the agreements I signed personally concerns security and military cooperation. As you mentioned, sir, there will be more American troops in Poland. There's going to be enhanced cooperation. So could the bond with the White House thwart the EU's intention to force Poland to conform? Building for Trump on Polish soil would have a propaganda effect in any confrontation with, with Russia. But I do believe this is aimed at strengthening a Polish position within the EU, not as a serious alternative to, to strong Polish position in the EU. This month, Poland has been courting the leaders of Lithuania and Slovakia. It's trying to forge new alliances within the EU to challenge the dominance of France and Germany. If and when Brexit happens, Poland could become more powerful within the EU. The loss of Britain's moderating presence could make it harder to stop the Poles from marching off the designated course. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in Warsaw.